amazing, fantastic, delicious, beautiful, wonderful, amazing coach. Yes, you. Now it says I'm live. <laughs> Brilliant opening. Hello there, you delicious, amazing, incredible, fantastic, wonderful, wonderful coach, you. Yes, I'm here. Uh, I, I'm here. I'm trying to get some uh, regularity showing up on Mondays. Um, typically, I actually talk about uh, the upcoming skill in our Coaching Skills Forum calls, which are free calls. Go check them out, coachingskillsforum.com. They are amazing, unlike anything else out there. And we're going through alphabetically, and I and we're in the P's. And I noticed that we just finished, uh, well, we just did uh, Passion and Purpose. Wow, that's an amazing, uh, it was an amazing call, unbelievable. And coming up in a couple of weeks is uh, perceiving and recognizing the client's potential uh, and, and, and all that comes. But I noticed that there was one that's not in the list and it's not really a coaching skill, but considering today, it kind of came up in my head and my heart, uh, the word peace. And alphabetically, it fits perfectly for today. And then realizing today is Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, Dr. King. Um, and, and I started thinking about his approach and what he stood for, and, and certainly for civil rights and equality and, and all of that, but uh, and, and very critically important and then still, unfortunately, an ongoing battle um, because there is something really important about accepting the whole, accepting everyone. There is a, um, there is a, a, a low survival mode, a battle mode of I must beat someone else in order to feel or feel better. And, and, and that's the oppression, that's the putting people down. It's, and it's not just racism. It's huge in racism, but it's it's everywhere. Notice how that shows up even just in our day to day when we get into fights and battles with our loved ones. And we're here. I, I, I startled myself in realizing in my moments of anger and frustration because my way is not being done or my wife is not doing this and she's doing that. And I start really battling her and fighting her to suddenly realize I'm trying to hurt this other person for my own feeling of gain. I actually don't gain. I actually lose. That's the tragedy. When we put others down, when we step on other people to make ourselves feel like we're rising up, we're not winning. We're not. And, and it's such a, a tendency everywhere, not just, again, in racism or sexism or any of these other horrible isms where those people are bad and wrong and less than. We're all the same. We're all. But that's actually not what I wanted to bring in, although it is also important because I started thinking about his strategy, his relentless, unyielding, determined, steadfast, stalwart commitment of passive resistance. One that he created, he adopted from Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi uh, adopted it from, uh, I'm not sure of the exact line, but it goes back to Christ and Jesus probably picked it up from somewhere else. I don't know who started this. Um, but it's that passive resistance. It's the, the refusal to meet anger and aggression with more anger and aggression, because all that does is it continues to feed and exacerbate and multiply and magnify. So when we, same thing with just even a conflict, like when I have a fight with my wife or with somebody else, if I'm meeting that with more anger, then they're going to meet that with their anger and they're going to, and we're going to, and they're going to, and we're going to, and we're going to constantly be battling and fighting and it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And so these brilliant men, and there have also been amazing, brilliant women along the way who have recognized not 
to feed that equation. That when there is aggression and when there is hatred and when there is dominance, there's typically two, three responses that we find ourselves in, right? Fight, flight, or freeze. When somebody is aggressive and angry and attacking and dominating and, and all of that, our natural instinct is to fight back. How dare you? I'll take you down, you idiot moron. You're the problem. And we know that that doesn't work. We know it doesn't work. Sometimes we have to fight back. Sometimes we feel like we have to fight back. But in the end of ends, we do know all that does is create more damage and it feeds their fire, and it feeds our frustration and our anger. So fight is our primal base uh, operation of action. Flight, turn and run, get away. And when we talk about a lot of these conflicts, we can't turn around and run away, but we try to avoid it. We try to get away from it. We try to just avoid all these problems, and that doesn't work. And then we freeze. We're so stunned and overwhelmed and shocked and freaked out and scared that we just don't even know what to do and we freeze. And that doesn't work. And that doesn't work. And so what these brilliant men and women chose to do, insisted, was there's another option. And that's the option of passive resistance, of holding true to love, holding true to what's right. Not what's right for my ego and my survival, what's right on the bigger cause, to hold fast and hold true. Now, I'm massively simplifying, and my heart goes to all of us because it's not just in the giant still existing racism, sexism, religious persecution, all of this. That's all that we're talking about. And I am not anywhere near the expert of these fields, except as a bystander and a citizen that's involved and pulled into it everywhere I turn. And again, it's not just the big ticket items. It's also the little ones where we get into arguments and frustrations and challenges with each other on a base level, on an individual level. So this is just in general, and I'm building up to something here because what had occurred to me was also that struggle that we have with ourselves. When, we, when our saboteurs come in, when we try to dominate ourselves and you idiot loser, what kind of a moron are you? We say that to ourselves. Ah, you're not good enough. I don't deserve this. Nobody cares. Nobody likes. Nobody wants. We fall into these, these patterns and these beliefs that are that we cripple ourselves. Think about this. We actually set about, we take out the other person or the world or the government or the, the whatever it is, all the other. We actually do this to ourselves. We oppress and we persecute and we, we demean and we lower ourselves. You are not good enough. You do not deserve. We tell ourselves that story in some form or another. Now, you personally may not be persecuted by this affliction, but I know you know people who are, who struggle with anxiety and perfection and and performance and trying to make it right and perfect and and try to all these things just to try to control our world and we are constantly beating up on ourselves for it and then note what happens when we attack ourselves we try to fight we try to fight ourselves and you do see how insane and bizarre that and exhausting that is and i know i've gone through that in my life you may have i know you know people not just clients although i know you know clients who are but also people in your life 
we beat ourselves up and then we fight back. Oh, I should, but I deserve this. Oh, but I don't. Oh, but this. Well, just do it anyways. And then we try to banish that saboteur. We try to punish that saboteur and beat it down and get rid of it. Do you get that doesn't work? Our natural instinct is to uh, flight. We try to run away from ourselves. You also get how absolutely insanely impossible that is. We try to run away from ourselves and ourselves still stick around and keep going. And then we also, we, we were just so stunned. We're so overwhelmed. We're so caught off guard. We don't know how to respond any other way, but just to freeze and hope that this problem just goes away. But we are the problem on ourselves. So we don't go away. And there's another option that we get to do. This, my dear friends, my dear, beautiful, amazing coach, this is what you bring to your clients. This is what you bring to the world. A different option than their natural default mode. You get to let them know there's another way when you feel beaten down by the world, by your community, by another, by yourself. You don't have to fight. You don't have to flight and turn and run. You don't have to freeze. You can connect to that deeper part of you. You can find that truth. You can find that love. You can find that heart. You can find that what's right. And you can stand solidly and firmly. You can passively resist for something bigger within you. Thank you, Dr. King. Thank you, Mahatma Gandhi. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, everybody who have upheld this and insisted this is how we can choose to live our lives because that's what we get to bring into coaching. So I feel very moved to expound and share this with you. I hope that this has helped and inspired you in some way. Take that moment today, tomorrow, the next day ongoing. This is an ongoing challenge. There will unfortunately, until, until this is proven wrong, there will unfortunately always be this kind of dominance and conflict in the world. There will always be this, this battle and this uh, uh, attempt to dominate and beat and see other people as less than. And as a result, it's the culture supports us seeing ourselves as less than two. There is another way. Find that deeper part of you that knows the truth, that knows not the ego, but that knows the deeper wisdom. You are beautiful. You are powerful. You are magnificent and amazing. You are an incredible gift. Pass that along to your clients, pass that along to everyone you meet and bring it into your coaching every single moment, not just to your clients, but to yourself. I hope this has helped inspire. Keep coming back for more because there will be more. Join this Facebook group. Uh, uh, go to my website, uh, join my membership thing. I've got so much more to share to help you grow and be the coach you are truly here to be so that you can help the world. Bye. So I was at the intersection just five and I look up at the sky. You know what I saw. I saw three geese. Three geese? Yeah, I'm here. I was just finishing up the video. That's okay.